Pop World, Future Chat O'Connor and Frida, Reba, Darcy here. Uh, we are here to witness uh, something that's already happened. We're going to call it the one that got away. Um, I shot about a 20 minute video and then uh, it too paused while shooting. So I was having a little hiccup in my last video and uh, yeah, in the last video and in the one before that. And both times the video would shut off and for reasons that it took me a minute to figure out and I wrongly deduced that maybe it was a heat related issue as we were shooting out in the sun last time and it was quite hot on the balcony and we had a lot of apps open and running and I just off the top of my head couldn't figure out what was wrong. Instead, what it looks like <clears throat> is I am just learning all of these settings on this camera and if I bump something, I won't always catch it. And then this time it only took about 40 minutes of videos or two 20 minute videos to completely delete the camera once I had bumped it off of its uh, off of its device. So in other words, everything I recorded was piling up on the camera's memory when I'm supposed to uh, have it set away from that. And it wouldn't shoot very long at those settings going on its going on the amount of on the amount of memory it has before it would start filling up. So and it would start telling me that. And that's kind of what that was all about. It took me a little while to figure out what I had done. And I don't even know how I had done that. But uh, in the meantime, I had removed an awful lot of wire on this little Japanese black pine. This is a little terracotta potted tree that we did some time back. This tree has some fantastic motion going on it. Are we in focus good? How are we doing on focus? We're in pretty good focus. And as I cut it away, I made the observation <clears throat> that it was holding, it was holding its shape really well. And I had also alluded that we were going to make this a multi-parter. And even though we lost about 20 minutes of the show right off the bat where I took all of this while, you should have seen it. Uh, as in most fish stories, the one that got away, you should have seen it. It was something. Uh, it was a little easier than the last one. And the reason it was easier was I didn't really, I wasn't really crazy about the job I had done uh, wiring this tree, but I wasn't disappointed in it work-wise. I was disappointed in it look-wise. And what else I talked about that was in one other time before when I had some wires that were working well, but didn't look well, and I tried to change it so that it would look better. Uh, that was like wiring a tree and then deciding to unwire part of it and do it again. I wrecked the tree unwiring it. And it was probably already tired from where an amateur had just wired it and then for me to try to get all of that off without damaging it, I wasn't good enough at that stage. My game wasn't good enough at that stage and I tore the little tree up. So that's kind of one of those lessons that you teach yourself. Nobody taught me how to do this part or particularly that part. But when it came to doing something, I did kind of learn that if you've got a wire you're not happy with and you're not about to put the tree in a show, uh, if it's doing what you want it to do, leave it alone and uh, let it stay like that until next time. And then maybe next time when it comes time to cut that wire off, you can do it better then, as long as it's doing what you want it to do. And I've seen other people, I've seen other bonsai experts agree. Oh, come on, Pat. Other bonsai experts agree with that. Uh, To the point to where I saw one instructor uh, had really good motion down here and had really good motion up here and what was going on right here was exactly what they already wanted so they wired the bottom and then when the tree did a really good bend here that they didn't think needed wire they went from there above it 
and then started wiring again, explaining that they didn't need to uh, be dancing the wire around all that tender vegetation when that part of the trunk needed nothing. And they did apologize for the way that looked, but they also explained that it wasn't necessary and that it wasn't for show. And I totally get that. I see what they were doing. To that end, when I had this little tree wired, we got some really good, fantastic even motion out of this little tree. And I thought that all looked really, really, really nice. But I didn't think the wire did. So having learned from my past experience on, on uh, living with your wiring errors rather than possibly potentially wrecking a tree over it. Now it's time to make amends. And I'm really happy to see that this tree is holding all of its little bends with these wires going away. I say they're going away. I um, fault these up here. Uh, part of it fell away fairly quickly. And then kind of like what you see we're doing right now, part of it was a bit of a grind. But uh, it's working out. We are getting, we are getting it out of here. cut it in two more places don't tell me it didn't we still didn't cut it all the way through after all that nope, not quite. we will though such a way that I can get that little cut. One more chop and we'll have this wild. It's flopping around so I can't, every time I touch it with the wires it moves. And it's kind of on there at this point like a necklace. We win. Okay. Still have. terrific little tram. This is still going to be at least a two-parter. <clears throat> when I get this one little last wire off of here, we're going to call this enough for tonight. Uh, remember, I've already done this for 30 minutes plus uh, 
played Where'd the Video Go with my phone for about 45 minutes. So it's a little bit later. My partner in crime is stacked out here. Um, she is a trooper, but you know, at some point she was like, enough's enough, Pat. Have your guys call my guys when you figure this out. Uh, look at that. This guy is holding it shaped so well I can move it around a little to help me get it unwired. And it's still gonna go right back there where I had it. Very, very pesky. On a uh, tighter, I don't know. I think I think I'm getting lucky with the condition of this tree that it's kind of letting me do this. I don't know if they would all hold up this well to what I'm doing here, for instance. How are we on? Yeah, you can still, we're still in the movie here pretty much. All right, I'm going to try to go in here and start slicing this stuff up if I can. Unlike the last one, these aren't loose. These are still, these are still fairly seriously uh, wound up. Kind of get an idea about what I'm saying about some of these trees. I'm not going to want to remove the wire. Uh, I feel like we're getting away with this guy and we're able to hold pretty good shape. I don't think all of them, I don't think I would get away with everything I've done so far to this one. We're not out of the woods yet on it, but so far it's held its shape pretty well. In our next video, I should be able to wire this and get about anything I want out of it. If I want to go back and look at a photograph and put it back exactly like it was, I can. But here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to take a wire and start off at the base and start sewing it around all those Cheerios. No, if I have two Cheerios that are laying in together, I'll wire them together uh, instead of going around all the way around one Cheerio and then going all the way around another. Did that with rail. I couldn't even see that wire because it, all I could see was needles. But I was pretty sure that what I had in the flowers was uh, wire and not trunk or needle so I cut it and I was wrong. So that so when it comes time to rewire this thing I can wire it like that right and I can wire it like that. I, I won't be taking a wire and trying to wire all the way around one circle and then come up through the other way and try to you know I'll be doing this I'll be kind of wiring together my little bundles Otherwise, this little guy has done a really, really good job of holding its shape. I think it, uh, 
just got a little bit of a beating, a little bit, not too much from doing that. If nothing else, uh, I think the real beating it probably got from the heat, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of heat damage. I think it'll be probably okay. Uh, that is a quickie compared to the one that we dropped. What was uh, the first one? All this top part was intricate also and not quite as tedious though it went faster because all of that was a little bit more uh, approachable. In the next video, it'll probably be daylight because I don't think I'm gonna start on the next one tonight. It's already, it's already, it's not too late, but it's too late to get started on another one. Haven't already felt like I'm on part three. Um, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Our next video will be uh, tomorrow when we uh, take these several pieces of copper wire that you see here, and then we're going to stab them in the soil and start wrapping and retraining this little guy. And we're going to leave, unlike the other ones that we also repotted, we like where this one is. It's in an orchid pot. You can see it's an orchid pot because it's got orchid bark is what it would, it would have so that it wouldn't fall out of there so it has extra ventilation. Uh, what I do is put screens in the bottom of them. And I saw the growers in Japan using orchid pot, pots for their pre-bonsai and thought that was cool. So uh, I asked the boss to get some and then I got some from our store. And uh, this tree is going to get a little bit of wire tomorrow. It's holding its shape really well. I'll probably, um, I'll probably kind of go back like it was, but I don't have to. We could, like, we'll probably just bundle these back together and make them really nice little Cheerios. And copper will look nice in there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching.